Good morning, class. Good morning. My name is Pam Turner, and I'll be the moderator for this morning's lecture. And welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school, not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as the result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States and certain other foreign countries. The Tampa branch was established in 1996. At this time, I would like to introduce you the Dean of the Tampa branch, Dr. Joel Turner, and our President, Dr. Cynthia Smith. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles, not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is a title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew, Greek, nor Latin languages have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in our own English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in His pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, the self same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua and the Messiah whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title can be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and he showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. <coughs> Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. 
The ten primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature, in the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. And if you haven't already, I want to uh, remind everybody to please silence all electronics. We will have class dedicated in prayer this morning by Dr. Lidora Nicholas. And we're doing a musical selection, right? Yeah, a little choir. A Tampa choir. The scripture reading will be read by Dr. Sherry Williams, which is Daniel the sixth chapter. Let us bow our hearts in the mind a moment and just thank Yahweh, all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh through Yahshua the Messiah that he continued to enlighten us with the knowledge that he wants to give us as a gift. Nothing that we have to work on, it's a gift. You know, and just be thankful that we are not out there in the world. We have to be in this world, live in it, but we are not of this world. We are a new creature, change, hopefully, you know what I mean? That's our goal, to be one with the Father, you know, at that, you know, that, that revelation at the end, you know what I mean? That glorification, that's what we want. Because it, it's nothing out there, and we just need to be thankful that whatever Yahweh has given us, let's stand on it. That's all we could do. Just stand on it. Don't waver. Just stand on it. Don't question him. Because he, 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 he gives us what we need. And that's all we have to do is just be diligent. Just, just, just listen to that still voice in us that's telling us, you know, that, you know, we know right from wrong. You know, and we don't have to go along with what the world has, 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 has out there to offer. Because it's not doing them any good, it's, so it's not, definitely ain't gonna do us any good. Because we already we know the truth, and it, people's out there hungry for it. And let's not take this here for granted that what Yahweh has shown us. He took us out of the world, and we don't need to be back into it. With all these blessings and many more, let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh yeah. Good morning. Good morning. I'll be reading out of the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by A.B. Trainer of the Scripture Research Association, Incorporated. Daniel, the sixth chapter in the Holy Name Bible is the eighth chapter. So I'll be reading out of the Holy Name Bible, Daniel, the eighth chapter. Uh, it, Please Darius to set over the kingdom a hundred and twenty princes, which should be over the whole kingdom, and over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give accounts 
unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes, because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole, whole realm. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his Eloa. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said, unto, said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes and the counselors and the captains, have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any deity or man for 30 days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now, when Dan Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day, and prayed and gave thanks before his Eloah, as he did aforetime. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his Eloah. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any deity or man within 30 days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true, according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Then answered they and said before the king, that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself, and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and the Persians is, that no decree nor statute which the king established may be changed. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy Aloha, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his princess, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a, a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living Eloa, is thy Eloa, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My Eloa has sent his angels and has shut the lion's mouths that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, I ha have I done no hurt. Then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no manner of hurt was found upon him, because he believed in his Eloah. And the king commanded 
And they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions, them, their children, and their wives, and the lions had the mastery of them and break all their bones in pieces, even before they came at the bottom of the den. Then King Darius wrote unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble in fear before Eloah, the Eloah of Daniel, for he is the living Eloah and steadfast forever, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivered and rescueth, and he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth, who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. That was Daniel chapter 8. I want to acknowledge our visiting brethren from Cleveland, Ohio, Wesley Hampton. It's nice to have you with us. <laughs> and our first speaker will be Dr. Wesley Hampton. And the point is right there for you. Okay. I'm happy to be here. I uh, really experienced some, some things getting here. Uh, Yahshua the Messiah, he shall be so big. I've never experienced anything like this before this time. He took me through some things. To, to, to make me know a reality that he, he exists. Mm -hmm. That you can fully know that something invisible that you can't see exists. It exists. Mm -hmm. I came into the Cleveland class in 19... Uh, 84. Um, I've experienced uh, quite a few uh, conventions during the time that I came in. The last convention I attended was the 19, uh, 1987 convention in Dallas, te Texas. That was an experience for me. Um, I uh, want uh, Yahshua to form his spirit in me continuously that I might uh, partake of that love, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit throughout eternity. I'm not uh, I've really experienced some things that it's hard to describe if you if I mention those things that it seems like it was it's impossible for those things to have happened and it was uh, continuous it's like was over a period of three weeks. And uh, the, the, this, the city that I live in, in the state, uh, is, is Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, I, I do attend that class uh, maybe once a month, but not to be a part 
partaker of the things that they're teaching because I know people in that class and I know the things that are wrong. It seems like it's almost impossible for uh, what's, what's been taking place uh, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to describe because it just, the things that we, we've been taught repetitiously in that class, for them to be wiped out of people's minds, out of their memory, you know. And there's not much uh, conversation in reference to the things that they've learned because it, it'll, it'll oppose the things that are being taught. And it's very little uh, conversation among one another because of the things that are presently in their mind, which they have been taught. And uh, I would think that they're probably going through a lot of suffering and confused, confusion. I, uh, was, I, it wasn't, it, it wasn't probably time for me to attend some of the other classes that do teach the truth, but I, I did go down to Springfield uh, on Father's Day. They had a uh, they had a class there, informal, and uh, they had activities and food, and it was it was a real good feeling because I had hadn't been along around that in a long time, and in doing that time, the things that Yashua Yashua had put me through it led right up to the time that I got off the plane yesterday in Tampa. It was terrifying. It was unbelievable. My wife thought I was losing my mind. The police thought I was losing my mind. People was following me. I was I was actually terrified. I had to escape from my house and I had to sneak back into my house. I was talking to the councilman of the neighborhood, the commander of our district, and they were escorting me home out of situations that if I mention them in detail, it was almost sound impossible. But Joshua wanted me to leave that city. He wanted me to come to a state in the city that had a class that was teaching the truth. It was it was it was just horrifying, but it wasn't those people that was doing it. It was Joshua doing it. The minute I stepped off that plane, and my nephew picked me up, he experienced some things, not pr not prior to that that confirmed that the things that I had experienced were true. He said himself that he would have thought I was crazy if Joshua hadn't put him something, through something, right before he picked, picked me up from the airport. And it all stopped. All of it stopped when I got in this car. Yahshua is the one. He's the one. 
all things are about Yahshua. From the beginning of this creation to the to the very end of it. He's the one. Thank you. Hallelujah. Speaker will be Dr. Sherry Williams. Good morning. As always, it's a pleasure to be here and to uh, be able to, you know, recognize and uh, be with like-minded people. I was thinking about that recently. It's so difficult out mm -hmm. here in the world because, you know, we're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses on. And in that is all this... Um, for lack of a better word, just negativity, you know, a lot of it around us. And that's the way it has to be at the end of this age, but we have to hold on. We have to endure at the end of this age. And it, just the very, it, you know, just the very sound of that word, endure, doesn't sound pleasant, right? If you endure something, that doesn't sound like it's going to be something pleasant, right? So, but... The thing about it is that we have to, you know, keep us, keep the focus on Yahshua, you know, and he will get us through whatever it is. It may not be easy and it may not be pretty, but he will get us through. And what is the saying? You know, what doesn't kill you will what? Make you stronger. And so, and that's, you know, how Yahweh really works this thing if you look at it and you think about it. Because, you know, it, you know we have, I, I heard people say, you know, that, you know, oh, it sounds like we're saying the same thing over and over. But that's the way Yahweh works. And we are saying this because evidently we're, you know, and, and like that cranial cavity is, you know, there's so much junk there. There's so much junk. It's surrounded by so much stuff, you know, snapping off, really, literally. The, the synopsis just snap, 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 snapping all the time. And so, you know, and so we have to, you know, stand um, just like Daniel here in, in this chapter, you know, without wavering. Without wavering, and I was, when, when Joel had picked this chapter and I was looking at it, you know, and, and thinking about Daniel, and also we had read it with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you know, and they said, you know, whatever it is, it is. Yeah. If Yahweh, you know, save us, he save us. If he don't, you know, then he, you know, it's okay. It's okay in that way too, live, alive, you know, save us alive. They knew the outcome though. That there is salvation in Yahshua. They knew that, you know, in Yahweh at the time. Yahweh Elohim, you know. And they weren't giving that up for anything, for anyone. No matter what, who and said what, the king's decree. and Because it, it's kind of comical when you look at Daniel. Because he, it says after he knew that the king signed the decree. So he, you know, Yahweh had had had, had uh, made it known to him what was going to take place, you know. And so after, after he knew that, what did he do? He didn't hide it. He didn't try to run and sneak and close his windows and pray to Yahweh and all. No, he did it right out openly, right out openly. Because who, you know, if Yahweh be for you, who can be against you? Who? You know, uh, nothing is going to prevail against Yahweh. And that's the kind of faith and confidence we have to have in our creator. Um, so there's not a whole lot on my mind, you know, coming into class this morning, other than Yahweh's, all, you know, I don't want to say that like that, but like, you know, but um, coming into class this morning, I was listening to the radio and there's this, um, this, this uh, radio host was talking about how in the world that um, they're preaching there is no heaven or no hell and that um, uh, people are the millennials like are buying into this you know and um, and if there's no hell then there's no salvation and but <laughs> 
it's it's the millennials that are kind of self-destructing, if I can say it that way, you know, that are, you know, having difficulty coping in this world with the things that they have to face, you know, uh, education and getting jobs and uh, being self-sufficient and things like that, you know, and so um, I find that interesting, but it's in a way, but then again, it's not because with that mystery of iniquity, there's going to be confusion. There's going to be um, a, a, a plethora of of negativity, if I can again say it that way, going on, you know, and there's no love or no understanding of their creator in this world, and they're not looking. They're not looking for that. Um, uh, another, uh, what was it? I who was it? Oh man, I was reading. I was reading something else, and um, I thought it interesting. This. Oh, um, I don't know if, if you all remember a personality, Lola Falana. Yeah. She had a, a wonderful voice, actually. Yeah. And so I was um, reading like one of these things, Where Are They Now? And um, she had encountered um, some hardships. She, dis she um, developed... Multiple MS, I think I want to say, or something. She 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 developed something there, and so some sickness or as either multiple sclerosis or something like that. And so she switched to Catholicism, which I thought was interesting, you know. And so, um, but again, it's like. Where, where do you find comfort? How do you, you know, I know we know. How do, where do you find comfort in that? You know, when you're having somebody tell you what to do and, how, you know, and, and what to believe. And, and Yahweh is not like that. He tells us, let's go to, um, uh, lack of knowledge. My people perish. Because the beauty of this gospel is it's about knowing our creator. That's the difference in us now and prior to coming into class. Because I know for myself growing up, I never thought that I could know my creator until I died. That's what I was told, literally, you know. And that's God's business and you're not going to know this and, you, you know, don't do this and you know, and all this kind of stuff. And it's because, of course, they didn't know. They didn't know. The ministers and the preachers and the things like that, they didn't know. And, um, and the bottom line is every single one of them, I, I, every single one of them, they're in it for the money. They're in it for the money. I don't care what they say. I don't, I don't care. If, if they're saying something different, they're lying to themselves because they're not turning it down. They're not turning money down. They're not living. If they were really doing what the scriptures and things say, there was, you know, it wasn't like that, that they were getting rich and wealthy off the people that can barely make it themselves, you know? So, it, so they're, they're, it's just a bunch of lies out there. But go on. Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Uh huh. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy Elohim, I will also forget thy children. Uh huh. And I was thinking, you know, I look at this, I, I go to this yahoo.com website a lot, and it has a lot of interesting news facts and tidbits and different kind of crazy news stories, even, and things, you know. And uh, I, and I was just I, I it uh, amazes me still the wealth in the world. How do people have billions of dollars? How how I was all so many people so many have houses with twenty five and fifty rooms. What can you possibly do with that kind of in that environment, how, you can't even visit every room. <laughs> what, 
what I mean it's eh, a small group like now the the Smiths even Will Smith and them you know their children are crazy actually they're, they're kind of out here and some you know because they weren't raised they weren't raised they let them do what they want and it's so interesting how that Jada stopped working to raise the kids but that's not what she did because she didn't even know her daughter was cutting herself so she stopped working being yes to raise her and she didn't even know she has this thing on YouTube now or on some some media I don't I didn't watch it I see it on the the Yahoo thing clips of it you know where she's coming clean now supposedly with all the people that have been in her life you know and stuff like that and so um you know, and so they, they had even her daughter on there, and she didn't know. She didn't know her daughter was cutting herself, but yet she stopped working to raise her kids. How do you do that? What do you do? Where, where were you? You know? But there's no knowledge. There's no knowledge of Yahweh. And I don't want to say, oh, man, in these people, let me put it that way, because we know, we know, there's Yahweh is always worked with a small, insignificant group of people. Always. That's the way he's always, always worked. Daniel, as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Jonah, Abraham, you know, it was small numbers, small quantities. But you know, the thing about it that, that I see too, they had a love of the truth. They loved the truth, and that's where what Yahweh has hopefully placed in each and every one of us, a love of the truth. And it's not, again, it's not easy. It's not pretty always, you know, because, you know, Yahshua says, what did he say? I am the way, the truth, and the life. But it says he was comely, right? He, he wasn't pretty. He wasn't, you know, one that people would have flocked to, you know, like a Joel Osteen or, uh, you know, Oral Roberts even, who was a good orator or Billy Graham, you know, or somebody uh, that could speak well. You know, you look at Moses, he was a stutterer. You know, so Yahweh worked with what people would think were the weak ones in the world, you know, and brought them up and raised them up to show, you know, to, to, to show forth himself. But to give us, to compass us about with so great a cloud of witnesses. So here, the, you know, your peop the people perish for lack of knowledge. And you see what's going on in the earth plane. All the disasters, you know. And it's talked about. There's going to be wars and rumors of wars and pestilence and famines. And, you know, you look at it, you know, and he's heating up the earth. He's showing us that in Hawaii. He's heating that up. Eh? just tearing it down tearing it down and you know and the flooding that's going on in the earth plane and uh, you know again the fires you know and just you know but if you think about it I feel safe I feel safe I, I don't know how to explain it or whatever there's no fear in this life you know about this life you know and um, again, I don't know how to explain it, you know, and I, I don't dwell on it any, you know, now or whatever, you know, but when, you know, um, when I, I went through about with cancer, you know, and I knew, I knew, I knew, like, I had it. I don't know, how, I, you know, I knew that I had it, and I also knew it was going to be okay, one way or the other, whichever way it turned out, it was going to be okay. You know, and I didn't worry. He didn't put that on me to worry about it. You know, and I, I don't know if, you know, that's, and, and that's, that's Yahweh doing that, though. He did the work, you know, and I'm tell, he made it easy. I think back and stuff, you know, and uh, he made it easy. Like, it wasn't, I didn't miss a day of work, you know, which I should have probably took off some time, <laughs> but I didn't. You know, and I didn't really get like real sick or anything. And he showed me some things on how he's working with uh, the antibodies, you know, that, that help 
uh, cure the cancer or get rid of it. You know, and I mean, it was, it, it, it was a while. It was maybe about a year and a half, I think, total, going through the whole, whole thing. You know, and, um, but he just, you know, I just kept thinking, I, you know, the one thing that stuck in my mind, sticks in my mind even now, is if we have the faith of a mustard seed, we can move mountains, you know, and that's what Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Abraham, Jonah, they, uh, you, you know, even with Jonah, with his mess, but, you know, he knew he couldn't run from Yahweh. He tried, but he couldn't do it. He knew, you know, it, it caught up to him, but and that's the thing about it. If Yahweh is for you, that's the thing. He, who can be against you? And there's nowhere you're going to go. There's nowhere you're going to go to escape it. So just hang on. Hang on. You know, and you know, as you get through one trial, don't be surprised if there's another one. <laughs> don't be surprised. Because, I mean, look at the, the stuff that, you know, the children of Israel are for our learning, for our admonition. You know, there's one trial after another. You know, and you look at what the creator, the creator of this universe went through for us. For us. He did this for us. People want to say he did it for himself. That's crap. That's bull crap. <laughs> Even. Because <laughs> who, who would do this? Who, who, why would you do this for you? It doesn't make any sense. He made a creation. He made it to be inhabited. You know? And he has a purpose. He has a pattern and a plan of salvation, you know, and then he's going to, you know, let somebody just, just make him unrecognizable, you know, and, and just do, you know, for himself. It just doesn't make any sense. A savior saves. A fireman saves people. He doesn't run into the building and then run out with nothing saving himself if he can help it. You know what I'm, you know, if he can help it, he, he's going to try to save whatever. And you know what? You think about it. They'll even risk their lives for a kitten or an animal. So they're not doing this for, you know, for, for themselves. They'll risk their lives for even an animal. You know, if they know there's an animal in there and there's a chance of maybe rescuing that animal, they will do that. Without hesitation. It's just ingrained in them that Yahweh put that in them to show us a savior saves. That's what he does. You know? And you know, and, and what's gonna happen here at this the end of the age, and we can see it. We can see it. Yahweh's given us the signs and the clues. You know, when they talk about oh, they'd ask for a sign and all that, and Yahweh Yahshua said, you know, there's no sign but the sign of Jonah, I think it was. Um but you see all these things taking place in the earth plane, you know, and I know since I've been in class in the late 90s, I've been hearing we're at the end, we're at the end, but we cannot. And this is the thing that I see Yahweh working with us. We can't get complacent. We can't get laid back because and talk about because the scripture clearly tells us, see, that's the thing. Yahweh always tells us. He lets us know ahead of time what it is because he said peace and safety and then sudden destruction. So no, we cannot lay back and be complacent. You know, we still have to look and seek to Yahweh and be diligent about it, you know, and vigil in it, you know, and so, but we know it's coming. We know, but we can, we can have peace, righteousness, and joy right now, our 10th aim to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah. Now, not when we take off this flesh. Because I know now I've been taught in this class that doesn't work that way. You take off the flesh, it's too late. And Yahweh is showing us that too. All these people committing suicide. You know? So, you, it, it, you know, and I mean, it didn't start there. I mean, you look at suicide bombers. All, you know, all kinds, you know, just a mess. <laughs> 
What, what did we read last week? We, there was a scripture we read the other day, a, a mess. It just said a mess. Something was just a mess. It's just this mystery of iniquity is just a mess. A mess. What was it? I think it was the text. Yeah. The text, yeah. But it's just a mess. And that's what you have out there in the world, confusion and a mess. And don't step into it. If Yahweh takes you out of it, brings you out, don't step back into it. Don't let that mystery of iniquity plague you. What did, what did the angel say? Yahweh rebuke you. You know, so we don't have to step back in it. We don't have to. What did he say? He's rest. This is the rest wherewith the weary shall rest with him. It's with him. We got to believe that. We can't just say words and then make, not make them make sense or not make it be what Yahweh says it is. That's what Yahweh says. We don't, what did he say? Don't change anything. Don't add. Don't take away. He's given it to us. He put it right up here. Chart on the pattern or plan of salvation. It's right here. We witness it every time we come into class. And we should be witnessing to it outside of class every day of our lives. A chart on the pattern or plan of salvation. Now, this is a chart. This is a visual aid, a visual representation for us to use. But it's to, to use outside when we have to leave these doors, leave the safety. And that's what it was. Yahweh gave you that safety in your, your nephew's car when you got into there. Because you have this ark. Yahweh had this ark, this structure built. And there were eight souls that went in, into that ark and were saved. So, you know, Yahweh provides that shelter for us. Always. Always. He's always done it. He's never not done it. There's never been a time that he's not provided a shelter or safety. You know, even if it's a struggle. Even if it's a struggle for a little while. Whatever it is. You know, Yahweh's, he, he, he set it up that way. We just got to learn to accept it and go with it. You know, and so here we have this pattern or plan of salvation. And so that's Yahweh's total purpose. That's his whole purpose. A salvation. Yahshua. Yahweh is salvation. That's his whole purpose. Salvation for whom? He don't need saving. And that's the English I want to use. He don't need it. He doesn't need to be saved from what? He is the Savior. You know, and people got it all mixed up and confused. And that's what that mystery of iniquity wants, because he knows, too, that he has a short, a very short time, you know. And so what is he going to try to do? He's going to try to hit you with everything he possibly can. Hopefully, hopefully he can't get us with any of this carnal mess anymore. Cardinal ordinances, physical, earthly, or temporary order. He can't get us with stuff like this anymore, ceremonies. And I certainly don't have enough money to be trying to give somebody else money like that. You know, we do enough to try to keep our little building afloat, our little room here afloat, you know. So, and, and baptisms, we know, you know, um, in this heat. Sometimes you're in that shower two or three times a day, right? Mm -hmm. You take one in the morning, you come home from work, you got to get the dust off you from that. Because yeah. you ain't clean. You're not clean, you know? So, and water. We know you, you can't even drink the water half the, <laughs> half the time in this earth plane, you know? Drinking bottled water. I never thought I'd pay for water. Growing up, I can remember thinking that. When, I, when they started charging for water, who would pay for water? It's like, who would pay for air? But we do, right? <laughs> Cause, so baptism. We, we can't get fooled by these things. There is no salvation in this stuff. Suppers. It's called, I going to church, Last Supper. Oh, come partake of the Lord's Supper. The Last Supper. But we're doing it over and over again. The Catholics do it every day, I think, don't they? Every Sunday, anyway, when I went to Catholic school, I thought they did it. I think we went, when we had these, um, we used to have to go over there to the church across the street <laughs> from school, and, um, and they would be doing that communion stuff during the week even. I don't think it was just Sunday. No, they have it every, every day. Every day. Every day. So that tells you there. 
they they're contradicting their own selves because you got to be you know all every day they're giving communion and it lasts 20 minutes <laughs> it doesn't even make sense doesn't even make sense but sacrifices and these ten commandment laws you break one you break them all we couldn't keep them you know and they and the, the beauty of it is coming into this class was that you found out they weren't even meant for you Unless you're a Jew, they weren't even meant. So we're trying to do stuff that wasn't even meant for us to do. And what a burden has, that has been lifted off of us, knowing that kind of thing. That, that's a burden that has been lifted off of us. Don't put it back on. Don't, don't yoke yourself with stuff like this here. Don't go back to that kind of thing and get yoked in and, 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 and um, it corralled in. By, by that mystery of iniquity, because that's what he's going to try to do. He's got to come at us from every side, from every side. He's got to. That's his job. His job is to oppose all. That's Yahweh. All, not some. Oh, this is okay, but this ain't. No, he's opposing all. That's Yahweh. And Yahweh's laid it down for us, and he's, he, Yah, and I can remember hearing and reading and transcripts and things that Dr. Kinley said, you know, one, to keep it simple. Keep it simple. You know, we don't have to jump. You know, we don't have to jump anywhere. We don't have to jump. You know, we just keep it simple. Just follow that pattern. Follow that pattern. One, two, three. One, two, three. A, B, C. A, B, you know, just follow the blood, blah, 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 blood, the water, the spirit, the 40, the death, the burial, the resurrection. That's all we have to do. Follow the pattern. You can't go wrong, right? If you follow the recipe, follow the pattern, Judith, right? Mm -hmm. If you follow the recipe, you're not going to make, put wine in something that shouldn't be there, right? Is that what happened? Wine into the... It's old bottle. <laughs> old bottle. So, right. So, you know, you're not going to mess it up, you know? So... You try, you know, that, and, and Yahweh keeps this thing, again, simple for us so that it's not complicated. But the beauty of it is, you know, Yahweh is so beautiful. You're so magnificent. You know that we learn something all the time about Yahweh. Whatever it is, he gives us little bits and pieces just to keep us. Oh, how do I, what do I say? I don't want to say, like, keep you satisfied, I guess, you know, or keep you, it, it, it satisfies you, yet it also makes you want to know more, if I can say it, I guess. The words are hard, but, you know, it's like, gosh, you know, like, sometimes I'm like, gosh, I can't wait to get to class. I can't, well, you know, to hear and stuff, and we're going through the textbook and stuff, you know, and learning so much more about Yahweh, because you think about it. Again, that cranial, that cranial cavity, we need to stay away from it sometimes. <laughs> but because it can, but think, it holds so much information. The doctors even tell us we're not using anywhere near the capacity it's capable of, is what we've been told. What, you know, but Yahweh, so with that, you know, your creator can, and it talks about in the scriptures, he can't be contained, right? The heavens of heavens cannot contain Yahweh. So how, if that's the case, how are these brains supposed to do that? And Yahweh created them, and he knows what he created. He knows what he gave us and how he has to get to us. And that's the thing as teachers we learn, and all of us are teachers, one way or another, whether you believe it or not. Because you get up on this floor, and whatever testimony you give, it's a learning to somebody else. It's something that Yahweh has meant for somebody to get something out of. Whatever it is, a testimony, as long as it's to Yahweh, and, 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 and it doesn't, then you know what? And I, I shouldn't even say that because Yahweh's got his purpose running. We're going to learn something from anyone that gets up on this floor, whether it's in righteousness or unrighteousness. We're going to learn something. But it's all to the glory of it's all to the glory of Yahweh. That's what he's looking for, all to his glory, to his benefit. So he's going to let us see because he has to, right? Our aim is to discern and avoid being deceived, right? So he has to show us that. He has to bring that to us too. He has to bring that deception to us. We're not, we're not going to be exempt from it. 
in no way, sh shape, form, or fashion. And probably we're going to be hit even harder because this mystery of iniquity tried to tempt the very one that created him. That's a bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to tempt the very one that created him. And not once, not twice, three times he came after the one that created him. Three times and bold, bold, showed him the kingdoms of the world in a moment, in a moment, and all this be yours if you bow down to me. Bold. He's not going to be timid with us. He's not going to be creeping around. Mm -mm. Guys, we're in for it. You know, but the thing, the beauty of it is, there's safety in Yahshua. This ark is just a representation, right? A representation. Yahweh compasses us about with so great a, it's a representation. This tabernacle, a representation of Yahweh Elohim, right? And that's where we want to be. Our 10th aim is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua and the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification, right? But it's in Yahshua. That's where we, we came out of him and we want to go back in. That's the beauty of this gospel. And he's taken us. He's taken us. And boy, it's a trip. If you ever wanted to go on a trip, this is the trip to go on. You know, and the thing is just to hold on, hold on, because Yahweh is salvation. It's there in his name. And we just have to have faith and trust and believe in that. And again, this was an excellent scripture, Daniel, sixth chapter in the King James Bible of showing just how much faith to be thrown into, I mean, we can't imagine anything like that, to be thrown into a lion's den, but we have just as many trials. It, you know, it's not maybe thrown, you were thrown into a lion's den, we could say that, or thrown into a fiery furnace. Don't it get hot? Don't you get hot sometimes, right? <laughs> Things get a little, whew, like Yahweh, cool this mess down. <laughs> you know? What's going on here? You know? But what happens if you hang in there and you trust in him? It comes, it comes, you cool off, right? We cool off, cool down. We go through it a lot of times, even the witnesses, you know, we get hot, we get cold. We get hot, we get, you know, it's life. It's, you know, but the beauty of it is, is that we can hopefully see, you know, we can see that salvation. We can see Yahshua. You know, and see the salvation in, in him and him only, him only. And we don't have to worry. Don't get tossed to and fro. And, you know, and I used to think about, you know, all the people that I met and know in coming into this organization and how things have changed so much and what's being talked about and preached. And it's just, you know, hurtful in, in, a, in a one respect that you hurt for the 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 souls of people you know that you thought had this gospel understood it you know and i examine myself even to make sure that i am hopefully understanding it the way it's meant to be yeah. understood and yahweh doesn't steer me any other way he doesn't steer me away from this pattern or plan of salvation and that's the thing because they've been steered away steered away from the pattern or plan. They're not following the pattern. And if once you, and, and I can remember see, and I don't know where, but in transcripts, Dr. Kinley talking about that. You, you can't deviate from this pattern. Because once you do that, then who knows what's gonna happen. As they say, all hell breaks loose. And that's literally what happens, all hell breaks loose. You know, and, and think about it. He's made it easy. He's made it simple. Blood, 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 water, water, spirit, 40. And it goes on in this earth plane over and we got the floods, everything. It goes according, you know, in this earth plane to this very day. And when a child starts to be born differently than they are, then we should run. Well, then we got to run. Yeah. 
Yeah. Something's wrong. Yeah. If a child don't come out blood, water, spirit, 40, close to 40, yeah. you know, gotta we got to run. Mm -hmm. Then we run. You know, there's a problem, you know? So, uh, that you know, keep it simple. You know, come to class. You know, I am a stickler kind of about that. I don't want to preach to anybody, though. You know, it's everybody's got to, every tub's got to sit on their own bottom. Yeah. You know, but I do think it's very, very important that we come to class. Yeah. I think the supplements that we have by being able to watch things online, you know, YouTube and things like that are great. Mm -hmm. They're supplements. I'm in education, and that's what I do. I have to supplement my students' curriculum, for example, with other things, bring in other things to give them something more rounded and, and to be able to understand maybe they don't understand this this way but they can get it this way blah, you know things like that so you know so those things and and now it's like I remember coming into class how we used to travel and stuff and so YouTube and things like that has made it a little bit easier for people that may not be able to do that kind of thing to travel and things like that and you could pick up and look at a class somewhere else and hear the gospel still being preached though that's the beauty of it you can still hear the gospel being preached and that's what it's about you know that's what it's about spreading that blood you know circulating that blood actually throughout and Yahweh has shown us that and just made it another tool for us to be able to use but it doesn't replace you know you know anything you get a transfusion you get blood right you don't get something else right, right. It, you're not getting you can't live on something you know you get a transfusion you, it's got to be blood or the plasma or whatever but it's you know but so you know but again I don't want to preach to people but I do want to encourage people to please you know come to class as often as you can you know because uh, Dr. Kinley said it he, you know, it's not my words. He said it. He, on his last lecture, he said, you know, he stressed the importance, the last two lectures, actually, he stressed the importance of coming to class as regular, as you know, as regular as you can. And so it's, it's important for the body of Yahshua the Messiah. How do you form a body if the arm is over here and the leg is over here and the eyes over there and the ears? How do, how do, that doesn't form a body. You know, the body is a whole, is one unit. You know, and so it talks about, oh, you know, I don't want to get into that, but you know, the scriptures that says, oh, um, the eye is no better than the, this. And you know how and I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but, you know, but we're in the body. We want to form that body of Yahshua the Messiah, you know, because you look down here. Don't let anybody take this away from you. The kingdom of Elohim. New heaven. Here he is not alone and by himself. He did not end up this, the way he, he, he started off this creation. So that tells us he didn't mean for it to be that way. He didn't mean to be alone and by himself. He's not alone and by himself. He made a creation for it to be inhabited, and he made it so that he could come in and be the, the salvation that we so desperately need. And... Um, with that, I just, you know, thank you for the time and give all honor, praise, and glory to Yahweh through Yahshua the Messiah. And thank you for the time. Amen. Speaker will be the Dean of our Tampa branch, Dr. Joel Turner. Good afternoon. I enjoyed uh, the uh, previous two speakers, and um, I'd like to just kind of uh, go on, on uh, with some of the points that were already brought out and uh, maybe get into some other things in addition. Um, why don't we go over to uh, 1 Peter uh, 1 and 7 and also 4 and 12. And I don't know if you need to pick it up. You have to, I just looked it up. So I'm, Because, you know, the thing of it is, is as Sherry's talking about that mystery of iniquity. When he was up in that angelic, he outshone all the other angels. And he looked around, saw that he was more beautiful, more powerful, more intelligent. You see, was imbued, really, I mean, everything is made from these attributes of Yahweh. Now, 
he wasn't perfect in love. And if you're not perfect in love, all these other things are corrupted. You know, that it, it talks about that, that uh, he was weighed in the balance and found lacking. But he was filled with that intelligence and that beauty and all those, and the appearance of justice and all those, and, and the appearance of love. But his love was self-love. You know, there's a difference between that. You know, people do love themselves out here in the world. You know, especially some of the, some of these uh, celebrities and stuff like that. You know, you know, you, yeah, you know I was, it's funny you said that about billionaires. I was thinking too, how do they get that much money? I love where I work. I love my job. Um, I feel... I feel, I feel just from a natural standpoint, I feel uh, uh, fortunate that, that Yahshua put me in this line of work because I'd, I'd get a lot out of it. But it's just like I used to work for a biotech company. They made me stack, uh, sign a stack of papers this thick so that if I figured out a new way to go to the bathroom, they owned it. You know what I mean? <laughs> See, every thought that came in, that I had while I was in that building belonged to them. That's how it is out here. And the billionaires are the ones that are you're signing all those rights over to. And it was even on on NPR News that this guy uh, they, they're talking about the the massive increase in technology, and that. Uh, uh, it was, I think it was like n in the mid-90s, they finally reached 5 million patents. Well, in like the, 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 the next 20 years, it doubled. There are 10 million patents, inventions. And so they were interviewing this guy, okay? And I, he described it. And, you know, I'm not a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a technological thing. I'm not a physicist. Okay, but it sounded really amazing, mm -hmm. and it sounded like something that is going to uh, uh, make, I mean, everything from gaming to sp space exploration work way, way, way better and effortlessly. And so the, the interviewer from, from NPR said, well, I suppose you're going to get really rich by this. <laughs> and he said, well, no, actually, I'm not going to, he says, I, he says, I'm lucky to even have my name on the patent. Mm -hmm. That he wasn't going to... Now, he said, now, they pay me pretty good, mm -hmm. but they're going to make a bazillion dollars off this. Mm -hmm. And that's how the world works. Because this is... This is you know, people are, say stuff like, I'm, af I, I'm afraid I'm going to die and go to hell. Where do you think you are? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are in hell. Yeah. Now, you should be afraid of going to the lake of fire right. after you get out of hell. Talking about it, the, the sayings that we use, out of, out of the frying pan, into the fire, okay? <laughs> it's better to be in the frying pan, but it's not much, okay? And we are in his kingdom. He is the God of this world, okay? And the, and the world reflects that. Now, Satan is referred to as the author of what? The author of confusion. Okay. These millennials out here, I feel, I, I mean, you know, it's, it just seems so much easier. Okay. You know, I was out of the house on a, two months after my 18th birthday. Actually, the house left me. But the people in class took care of me. My real family took care of me. Jennifer fed me every night. I, I gave her a little bit of grocery money, and you see, and people gave me couches. They found me apartments. They got me food stamps. It's like all the people in class. They just up and took care of me, and so it was easy, you know. And 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 it, you could get an apartment for one hundred and twenty dollars a month. You can't get an apartment on minimum wage. And minimum wage back then was like three bucks an hour, and I could I could feed myself, and I could live in an apartment. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's gotten worse and worse and worse. 
Okay, so now, here we are. The economy has improved, all right? Stuff that, I mean, it collapsed when George Bush, W, okay? And it wasn't his fault, really. It's all the policies that they did, including uh, uh, what Bill Clinton did and, and letting the banks do whatever they want and, and, and uh, uh, the, the, the presidents before. All that, it, they actually can go, they go all the way back, I think, to Reagan and show how that, that economic collapse mm -hmm. was from all these stupid things that all these presidents allowed to happen. Okay, so, so Bush started making some changes on the banks and stuff like that and then uh, uh, Obama came in, made some changes, okay, and slowly the economy kind of creeped up out of the hole it was in. So Trump gets into office, of course takes credit for the whole thing, and it's going good. Now there's a saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And he's messing with it. With these trade, it's just like, it's going good. Go ahead, take credit for it. Just don't touch it. Well, he reversed that on the banks, too. He, yeah, the, the, banks, the banks got all of it and probably even more now. You see? Now, that's just, I'm sorry. They said we're headed for another uh, collapse. collapse. Yep. That's what they're, they're yeah. speculating. So, look at it's it's great to save for retirement, but don't plan on it. <laughs> you know, and don't be surprised if it happens. And just have faith and trust that Yahshua will take care of you, and get you to where you need to be. And He takes care of you spiritually, but He does take care of you physically too. You see, now this world is being run by this one, okay? It's Satan's kingdom. And he is the author of confusion. So when you're out here, you know, don't just have some faith. That, see, that Yahshua has you where you need to be. Okay, now, it, now I'm not chastising anybody. This is an encouragement, right. okay? I'm, I'm agreeing with everything that has been said, okay? Now, uh, read for me, Peter, please. You need to pick First it up? Peter 1 and 7. Okay. Mm -hmm. That the trial of your faith... I'll pick it up, please. Four. Four? Okay. Try that. First Peter 1 and 4. Uh-huh. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that faded not away, reserved for heaven, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of Yahweh through faith. See, we are kept him. by the power of Yahweh through faith. Mm -hmm. Now look at, without faith, it's impossible to please him. Right. And you know, the, the, the weird thing about it is, okay, the kind of, you know, contradiction in a sense is he's got to give you the faith too. You see, he is all in all. It's not me and Yahweh. It's Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Okay? And we're just lucky to be along for the ride. Alright? Okay, keep going please. Who are kept by the power of faith mm -hmm. are power of Yahweh through faith unto salvation. Mm -hmm. Ready to be revealed in the last time. It's being revealed now. In us. Okay, go ahead. Wherein ye greatly rejoice through now for a season, if need be. Ye are in heavy, heaviness through manifold trials. Now look at, we, <laughs> this is written 2,000 years ago. Those were our brethren that were writing these things. Okay? that They were going through trials. Okay? Now, Yahweh created Satan. He wasn't a good angel that went bad. He didn't lament over it or anything like that. He wasn't surprised by it. He wasn't surprised by this. 
these people out here in Christianity, they got the puny God. They got a do-nothing God. That's what they got. Okay, go ahead. That the trials of your faith being much more precious than of gold. Now these trials that we're going through, okay, going to that class in Cleveland, that trial, you see, Yahweh has set that up. Now, most of the people I came into class with, okay, people I grew up with, all my best and closest friends, for the most part, just a handful, okay, are not, you see, they all got sucked up into that. My best friend growing up, I see, He hasn't, we haven't talked in years. We have nothing to talk about. You see? And it's, it's just peculiar that just from a natural standpoint, you know how the physical reveals the spiritual? You see? He lost his sight. He can't work anymore. He's, he's younger than I am. And he can't work anymore. Okay? He lost his sight at a young age. And, and, and you know, the thing of it is, is that's just from a physical standpoint. That don't mean nothing, you see. But he lost his sight from a spiritual standpoint 20 years ago. He went blind. He was hung up on a man. There used to be a, a band. It was a black rock band. Uh, True Colors or Living Color or something like that. Pardon me? Living Color. Living Color. And they had a song called Cult of Personality. Yeah. That's what we have going on out, out here in the IDMR, is we have a personality cult, okay, where there's an individual who people have either set up or who has set himself up, I don't know, that's between them and Yahweh, either way it's wrong, you got to allow yourself, you see, the problem with pride is you tell somebody they're wonderful long enough, they start to believe it unless there's something better in them to keep them from that. You see? And that's, that's not their fault either. But you see, they are worshiping a man to the point where, and, and, and this has been reported to me, I haven't experienced it firsthand, that in a lot of these classes, they don't even have class. They, they play uh, an MP3 or an MP4 of what's being taught in, in headquarters. That's what they're getting. You see, people are not learning how to run these charts. They're not learning the basic principles. They, 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 uh, of, uh, they see, they're, they're, this, is this has become decoration. You see? They've gotten rid of these names and they replaced it with Kinley, who told them, you're not saved in the name of Kinley. You know, I read that transcript long before they started teaching this thing. I'm reading through this transcript, and I'm thinking, why the heck is he saying that they would be saved in the name of Kinley? That's the most absurd thing I ever heard of. I thought, boy, if somebody ever worshipped the name of Kinley and replaced Joshua with Kinley, I, 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 I said, that would just be the, that just couldn't happen. I, you know, I just thought, you know, he must be talking about something else, you know, and it's, there it is. You know, and we're not out of here yet. It's going to get crazier. Don't, ex don't expect an improvement. I kind of did. I kind of, you know, because the, the people, all these friends of mine, you know, I was telling you about how my friend, how that I called him one day and, and, and he'd just gotten home from class. And I said, well, how was class? And he said, well, we threw our Bibles out today. As everybody walked out the door, they took their Bible and they put it in the garbage can. What year was that? Pardon me? That was like how long ago? That was like 15, 20 years ago. I don't know where my friend is now. We used to, uh, I mean, he, th this is someone I loved. 
Someone that, I, that came into class around the same time I did was a young man my age, when I was young, okay? And, 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 and we grew up together. And we got into the books. And he was a good speaker. And now he's like worshiping a man in headquarters. And everything that man says, they believe. Now, I didn't mean to get on on all this. But you see, this is part of the trial that's going on. And I'm telling you, you know, there has been a winnowing out where the wheat is being separated from the tares. The harvest is going on right now. And the stuff that's being taught out here, this is a fiery trial. And you see, the thing of it is that, you, that, that, that I realize, and, and that you, I'm sure you realize too, is that if it were not for the grace of Yahshua, I would be right there in that, in that same, because I am no better. Not one single bit better than anybody else. You see? I pray for mercy from Yahshua on a regular basis and for forgiveness and for help, you see, for our salvation. I pray for those things, you see, on a regular basis. It's all about him. And that's what the trials do. You see, they break you down. You see? You know, these people saying, well, you're not involved. You're getting, uh, your soul's being cast out. You're getting a threefold entity of some sort put in you. I mean, what is it, Dianetics? Okay. <laughs> you know, it almost sounds like that drunk, or what, not Dianetics, but uh, what, what's Tom Cruise into? Scientology. Scientology. Yeah, the, the aliens are coming down and they're inhabiting your bodies and stuff like that. Yeah, that, that's, yeah, it's, 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 it's just a bizarro world, okay? But, you know, Yahshua has preserved us a handful, you know? And we, and, and like Sherry brought up, it was just a few out of the entire world. You see, just a handful, and one of them was the devil. Okay? And Yahshua, you see, he had a following, and they all just, as, the closer he, he got to this point, they all fell away until it was just a handful that was left. You see? It's always been a small group. It's always been a remnant. You see? But it's always been people that can preach with witnesses and with evidence and with proof. Now, we will go through trials. You're probably going through a trial right now. And if you aren't, there's one waiting for you. Okay? And, 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 and look, at, you're going to get rest here and there. And he's going to sustain you. And he's going to, you see, carry you through that trial. And you're going to learn something by it. And you will be stronger and better for it. You see? I've been a little more regular going to the gym lately. And when I'm in this class, okay, this class, it's an hour long. And they use, we use weights in, in, in high repetitions. To the point that at the end of all the repetitions, your arms are like shaking. Okay? And I'm sitting there thinking, I really hate this. I hate this so bad. But then when I get home, I feel, wow, I feel really good. You know, I feel like relaxed. I can sleep. I, 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 you know, I feel better physically. I can think better, you see. And, and you see, don't they call exercise, don't they call it resistance, mm -hmm. you see? The resistance that we encounter in this creation will make you stronger. Like you said, if it don't kill you, it makes you stronger, you see. That, finish reading that for me, please. Okay, 1 Peter 1 and 7. That the trial, trial of your faith, 
being much more precious than of gold that perishes. Mm -hmm. Through it being tried, oh, it be tried with fire. See, we're being tried with fire. Okay. Mm -hmm. Might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yahshua the Messiah. You see, that, you see, on this side, those that have gone through that trial will be there with him, you know. And, and I've, I've talked about this before, how that I, I had some friends in class that when, when uh, way back, when we first started class here in Tampa, they, they moved here also. And the, the, the one person said to me, he, he said, I don't know what you guys are talking about when you get up there and talk about trials. I don't know what you're talking about. He said, I've never had a trial. And he thought if you had the Holy Spirit, you would never have trials. Now that's backwards. And he's not here anymore. He didn't stick around too much longer after that. Okay? You see? That's not the way Yahshua works. He's going to put you through trials. Like the trials... Egypt was a piece of cake, right? They had a great time down there in Egypt. Living in palaces, <laughs> leeks and garlics. <laughs> you know? Okay, they had leeks and garlics. But other than that, they were enslaved. Their lives were worth nothing, you see. And Egypt is referred to as the furnace of affliction. And then you go over to the book of Revelation and it talks about this creation you see, that we live in is likened to Egypt. It's also likened unto Sodom and Gomorrah. That's where we live. Physically. Where we really live, so you see, is, is in Yahshua. Okay? And, and if, your, if your mind has stayed on him, what did he say he'd give you? Perfect peace. You see? And that's what we got down here. You see? Now, did you finish there? Mm -hmm. Go over to uh, one, uh, uh, 4 and 12. Okay. 2 Peter 4 and 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. Now, this is one of Cynthia's favorite scriptures. You get this fairly often. Don't think it's strange that you're undergoing a fiery trial. Okay, read that again, please. Beloved, think not, I'm sorry, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, uh -huh. which is to try you. It is to try you, go ahead. As though some strange thing happened unto you. You see, you, you might think, oh, something really strange mm -hmm. happened. Mm -hmm. I'm undergoing a trial. Mm -hmm. Did you know Dr. Kinley said that if you... Uh, if you're in class and you believe in, in, in Yahshua, you don't have to worry about cancer. And you know what people took that to mean? They took that to mean that you would never get cancer. <coughs> That's not what he said. Matter of fact, Dr. Kinley died from cancer, mm -hmm. from lung cancer. Mm -hmm. He was a smoker. I mean, the creator of the universe <laughs> knew that smoking was bad. Okay? And yet, see, whether you live or die, you don't have to worry about cancer because your soul is safe in Yahshua. We are preserved in Him. You see? And it's great that you had that faith. That was a witness for you. And each and every one of us get witnesses like those. Okay, that's a pretty dramatic witness. But still, w look it. You're sitting here in a chair listening to the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah being preached. That's a miraculous thing. That's a rare event, even to find one of these classes. You see? Yahshua has to bring you here, has to set you down. He has to preach the thing to you, and then it's him in, in you that is receiving it. And causing a change. Now, they were saying 
that there's no you in Yahweh. Yeah, there ain't. But there sure is a you in Yahshua. And that's where it should be. That we're being grafted into that tree. He is that tree. He's likened to that tree of life. He is the vine. We're the branches. And we're being grafted into him. You see? We're being grafted into Yahweh Elohim or Yahshua the Messiah. You see? And he's putting that spirit within us. And he's going to cause us and change us. And, 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 and trials are, are, you see, don't think it's strange. Think it's strange if things are going real good. <laughs> you know? It's like backwards. It's, it's, it's like everything they think out, you see, out here in the world, they think, okay, um, I got money. I got a, a, a husband with a good job. I got a nice car. I got the, the was it, uh, 2.3 kids and, and uh, a dog and a cat. And, you know, they, and, and they think they got all that stuff because of Jesus. Yahshua don't care about any of that, you see. And the, the, so, so anyways, I want to actually get to the scripture reading uh, just... Before you do that, can uh -huh. I just read 1 Corinthians 10 and... Oh, absolutely. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. Mm -hmm. There hath no temptation mm. taken you, but such as is common to man. Mm -hmm. But Yahweh is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. Boy, it seems close, though, doesn't it, sometimes? <laughs> close. Yeah. Mm -hmm, you, you see? But, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. See, that, uh -huh. that's, that's beautiful. Uh -huh. You see? So he's going to make that way of escape. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of um, uh, the, this friend of mine was, was telling me how uh, they, they were, they, they took a trip to New Zealand and they were hiking. And they were way in the back country where there was just, if something happened, there was no, no uh, way to escape. And um, uh, it's a friend of mine and his wife. And uh, his wife was in front and they were going down this path and there was like a drop off, you know, like certain death. And the guy in front of uh, uh, my, uh, my, my friend's wife, the path gave out. And she leaped and grabbed him. Just in the nick of time. Okay? Mm -hmm. And she couldn't pull him up, but she kept him from going down, and then some people got over there and, mm -hmm. you know, pulled the guy out. Mm -hmm. And she literally saved his life. This is something that recently happened. That's why I'm bringing it up. But... I know that feeling because, you see, there have been times where you, I've felt that, I've, that the path gave out from underneath me and Yahshua just grabbed me and, and kept me from falling. He made a way of escape, okay? That, see, he is salvation. That's his job. And he's doing it exactly how it should be. You see, and 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 it's just it's, it's a pretty remarkable thing, you know. Now, um, let's actually uh, let's go back to the scripture reading. But before we do that, let's go back to last week's scripture reading. Um, What's the Judges? Um, yeah, there's one point I wanted to bring out. Um, now. Gideon, so, so Gideon saved Israel, right? No. No. <laughs> Gideon had, was it 32,000 men? Mm -hmm. Started off. Started off with 32,000 men. That, that sounds like a pretty good, and Yahweh said, nope, too many. And then he does the trial where those that, you see, lapped like a dog, Okay, you know, that made me think, too, that back here, who went with Yahshua when he went up to spy out the lamb? Caleb. Caleb. Mm -hmm. Caleb.
Caleb means a dog. You know? And isn't 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 a dog man's best friend? Well, who's the man? And you know, when people say, oh, such and such, they're a dog. I'd almost take that as a compliment. <laughs> you see, our dog is beautiful. A lot prettier than most people I know. <laughs> you know, it's just, and, and they're faithful. And, 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 and there's been so many cases where a dog will lay down its life for its owner. They are, they are wonderful creatures. Okay? So Yahweh picked the dogs. <laughs> that lapped like a dog. 300 of them. And they never even had to swing a sword. Okay? So, they surrounded, see, in case you don't know the story, they surrounded the camp of the Midianites, who, as it describes, were filled the valley like gra grasshoppers. Okay? That's a lot. And they just surrounded them. They had the high ground, remember? And they had the pitchers and the torches, you see, and the trumpets. And they smashed the pitchers and blew the trumpets. And the Midianites just up and killed each other. <laughs> Yahweh did that. Yahweh had that happen. Okay? So you got blood. And the test was how they drank the water, right? Mm -hmm. And it was Yahweh who fought the battle or the spirit... So read for me. Um, uh, eight and twenty-eight. Judges eight and twenty-eight. Thus was Midian subdued before the children of Israel, so that they lifted up their heads no more, and the country was in quietness forty years. Thirty-nine years. Forty years. <laughs> days of Gideon. Blood, water, spirit, 40. You know, I have never gotten sick of hearing blood, water, spirit, 40. You know, because every time you see that, so you say you're watching the news, okay, and they say 40 people were rescued, and it happened 40 days, and 40 something, it's like 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, and then you look into it and you see the blood, water, spirit. Every time I see that, you know what it says to me? It says Yahweh is real. And, and I'm just reading through this. I'm going, 40 years? Well, well mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. You see? But I forgot to bring that out last week. Now let's go over to uh, um, the scripture reading, t today's scripture reading. In Daniel, 6th or 8th chapter, depending on what <laughs> A.B. Trina decides. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see? Change the well, and you know, there's, there, there's scriptures that say, do not add to or take away. So what, what does A.B. Trainer do? Well, he keeps the parts he likes and he takes, takes some stuff out and puts some stuff back in. Oop, I don't know who that is. Anyways, um, that's dangerous. Okay, now... It's great he put the names back in there. But you see, when you read about, uh, and we were reading about this uh, on Wednesday class, and that he was also big into keeping these carnal ordinances. Now, actually, I did some research just a little bit. Okay, Wikipedia. All right, so, so it may, may or may not be true. But he, he was actually, he, he was born in Italy, was raised a Catholic, and when he was 13 years old, okay, they moved to New York. When he was 13 years old, he ran away from home and went to Buffalo. Now, why anybody would go to Buffalo, I don't know. But anyways, when he, when he, when he got there, he w got involved in a born-again Christian scam. He was a scam artist, okay? And they would, they would have these revivals and scam people for their money. And while this happened, okay, he went to one of the revivals and he got caught up in it and then became a born-again Christian. Okay, so he's a, an Italian Jew Catholic born-again Christian. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, that's kind of the story with him. But one thing that he was always big about was keeping these ordinances. 
So when Yahshua says that he came to fulfill, he replaced that with establish. establish. Okay, so there's mistakes in that Holy Name Bible. But, you know, there's mistakes in the King James Bible. There's mistakes in all of them, you see. And that's why we have a pattern. Okay, this is the measuring rod where you can take this and you can apply it, you see, to the creation and you can apply it to the stories. Okay, and, and you see, just as there was an atonement made here, you see, where all sins were forgiven, and they had, it, you see, that's a principle of that Pentecost, okay, or that, that new covenant. And Yahshua is the high priest of that covenant, and he is the one, you see, that, that has made atonement for us, okay, and he is, he's, he's not only the high priest, he's the blood that was sprinkled at the altar because it was the blood of the lamb. Is that right? Okay. So he, he is everything, okay, concerning that. Now, Daniel, okay, I, I, I always love this chapter in Daniel. Let's just start at, at 6 and 1 and we'll just get through as much as we can. Daniel 6 and 1. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes that which should be over the whole kingdom. Now look at Okay, you have here the image that Nebuchadnezzar saw. Where you had Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon. And then Babylon was taken over by the Medes and the Persians, which Darius was the king of. And then Darius was overthrown, okay, uh, 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 by, um, by, the, uh, by Cyrus, okay? And then Cyrus was the one that allowed them to go back and rebuild the, uh, Zerubbabel's temple. So, that, so we're right in the middle of this whole story. And Daniel lives through the whole thing, okay? And so, so here's Darius, okay? Uh, so he's taken over Nebuchadnezzar, and he that this is the same mystery of iniquity. See, this image is 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 that 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 mystery Babylon, okay? And it goes further because then you have Grecia, which took over the world, and then you have the Romans, both pagan and papal. So that's that mystery of iniquity going down through time, and that's the image that that the Nebuchadnezzar saw. And Daniel was the one who interpreted that, that vision. Okay, now uh, keep going here, please. Two, and over these three presidents of whom David, Daniel was the first, that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Uh -huh. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes. Right. Because of an excellent spirit was in him. See, what, what, what excellent spirit was that? Yeah. That was Yahshua, or Yahweh Elohim, manifested in that body. See, you, you got that, where, where both, you got, I mean, you know, we talk about how the two mysteries are walking side by side down through time. They are literally walking down, because you got Darius and you got Daniel. And they're hooked up in this situation. They're walking right down, they're both mysteries. You see, Yahshua walking down through the various people that he, has, uh, you know, put his spirit in and the mystery of iniquity right there, you see, with him. And, and the, the thing of it is, is, you know, we talk about how that, you see, uh, Dr. Kinley w would say how that Satan wasn't, uh, I, I don't remember the exact words, but he wasn't a liability to Yahshua. He was an asset. And then you get examples here with Darius you see, he was an asset to Yahshua and his purpose. And then Cyrus, who was the mystery of iniquity, actually gave them vast amounts of, of substance to go back and rebuild the temple. You see, it's a weird thing, okay? But, you see, this is showing principles that even though Satan is, is doing this fiery trial thing, you see, on us, it's an asset to Yahshua. And it, and, and, it, and it produces spiritual growth. Okay, but keep going. I'm running out and of time. And the king thought 
sought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel. See, they, they were jealous. Kingdom. They didn't like it that Daniel was going to be put over them, too. Go ahead. But they could find none occasion nor fault. Now look at They could find no occasion or no fault. So Yahshua comes in. Okay, and he's fulfilling all this. Now he goes in front of Pilate. And what does Pilate say? Oh, you're, you're a bad guy. He says, I find no fault with him. He could find no fault or no occasion. You see, I remember a friend of mine, Steve Gagno, getting up on the chart. And, 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 and we, we say this all the time now, but it, it just the way he put it was just so plain. He said, this isn't about Noah. It's about Yahshua. This isn't about the children of Israel. It's about Yahshua. This isn't about the pattern. It's about Yahshua. Mm -hmm. It's not about Daniel. Right. It's about Yahshua. Mm -hmm. Daniel had no fault or occasion because Yahshua came in and he had no fault. Mm -hmm. You see? Go ahead. But they could find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Now, when they examined Yahshua, Okay, just like this, this lamb back here was examined for three days. They examined him for three years. And, and they were just, you see, just little imps coming up and saying, Oh, you see, great master. Okay, like, you know, you know, oh, great, you see, rabbi. You see, and then they, then, then they, what about this? You see, here we found a woman caught in adultery in the very act. Wow, how, how did that happen? Well, that was a lucky coincidence for them, wasn't it? You see? Is it they, see, they, they, uh, did they ever whoop them? Did, did they ever go, well, you guys got a point there? Nope. He, they're, they're, they, they searched diligently to find an error, to find something that they could accuse him of. And in the end, what did they have to resort to? But false witnesses that accused him that he was that he was that he blasphemed Yahweh by saying the temple was going to be torn down. That's one of the things they accused him of. Okay, you can read that in your book. All right? And there were false witnesses. Joshua never said that. He wasn't ever talking about the physical temple. He was talking about this temple or his body. In three days, he'll raise it up again. Okay, but that's another story. Go ahead. Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against Daniel except we find it against him concerning the law of his Eloah. So they're trying to find an occasion against Daniel concerning the law. Mm -hmm. So here is the, scri the scribes and the Pharisees. And they bring this woman. And what do they say? It says in the law of Moses. Mm -hmm. See, they're trying to find fault with Yahshua according to the law of Moses. Mm -hmm. And Yahshua just shuts them right down. You know. You know, and, and, and then they would say, well, what about this in the law of Moses? What about that? In the, see, and, and he would talk about scribes, Pharisees, and lawyers. He's not talking about like these people. In, in, you, see, you see along here you got, you know, uh, lawyers. What are, no, he's talking about people that were under the law. And that's all they did was study the law of Moses. That just sounds so horrible to me. Because <laughs> it's so tedious. Okay? They, they, that's all they did. Okay? And people even in this class to this day do not want to give up that Old Testament. Oh. Okay. Well, keep going, please. We'll just get... Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius lived forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains, have consulted together to establish a royal statue. Statue. 
and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any deity or man for 30 days, save of thee, O king, mm -hmm. he shall be cast into the den of lions. Mm -hmm. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it may be not changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altereth not. So the king was a god king. He was the only one you could petition. And they set that in stone. Go ahead. Nine. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was yes. signed, yes, Sherry brought he this up. To his house and his windows being open. Open the windows. Open the doors. Georgia pull Rousseau. back the curtains. <laughs> He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his Eloah as he did a four time. You see, I would have kind of, well, okay, I'm not going to worship this king, but I'll, I'll just do it secretly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. he only, they only had to restrain for that for only 30 days. So he could have not done it. He could have, yeah. Right. He went back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But he, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. only a 30 I mean, there's a, there were ways around yeah. this. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. But just as Yahshua willingly laid down his life for his bride. See, when we were reading in the transcript with Adam, Yahweh made Adam such that when his wife touched that fruit, there was just no question because of the love that he had. Look at How long had he even known her? 40 days? Okay, okay, when we were younger, if you dated someone for 40 days, okay, did you like, oh, I know, they're the one, you know? No, it takes time. It's like, okay, let's, let's say you dated a guy for 40 days, and uh, you had to die for him. <laughs> Would you do it? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you've known him a whole 40 days, okay? Time to die. Uh-uh. He knew from the instant he laid eyes on her that, 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 that she was the one. Okay? And it, he didn't think about it. He didn't say to Yahweh, what are my options in this situation? Okay? See, just as him, look at, it's often said that he loved us when we were yet unlovable. That's not in the scriptures, but the principle's in there. That he loved us before and brought us into this teaching. And he's making us look more lovable. <laughs> okay, if I can put it that way. That's the process we're going through. Is that we are being made like him. See, just as Adam was bone of his bone and flesh of, or she, Eve was bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. You see, we have to be bone of his bone spiritually and flesh of his flesh spiritually. Now we're out of time. Um, but um, uh, maybe maybe we could get into this scripture. Uh, we'll, I'll pick out another scripture. But one, one other thing I want to mention is August 2nd through the 5th in Orlando, uh, there's going to be a convention of people in class, people who teach the gospel, you see, according to the same way that, that we got it from the founder, according to the way, you see, uh, the Law and the Prophets, you see, and uh, 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 this is going to be at a resort in Orlando. Now, they did get a really good price on the resort. But I understand, you know, how, you know, finances are. But Orlando is driving distance from Tampa. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so if you can just see, they have one class on Thursday night. And I think one class, uh, two, two on Friday, two on Friday yeah. and then two on Saturday. Yeah. If you could make it for like Friday and Saturday, I, I know you would be edified. Yeah. Okay. And the topic is what, what is the new creature in Yahshua the Messiah? And they quote for, uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 where it says that we are a new creature in Yahshua the Messiah. And so I, I would like to encourage people to, to go to that. And, uh, uh, to, you know, I think you would find it uh, uh, very edifying. So thank you for the time. We thank everyone for coming out to study with us this Sunday. We hold classes here every Sunday from 11 to 1 and every Wednesday from 7 to 9. So let's all please stand and be dismissed with the doxology taken from the last couple of verses in Jude. 
Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. hallelujah.